This is a tub of Le Mer cream. Now, it might surprise you to hear this, but this Le Mer cream isn't actually in my hands. It's been photoshopped in using the miracle of modern technology. And there's a very good reason for that. And that's because this Le Mer cream would cost around $500. And I don't have that kind of money yet because not enough of you have subscribed to the YouTube channel. Le Mer is one of the most famous brands in the world of skincare. It's used by celebrities like Chrissy Teigen, The Rock, and Kim Kardashian, and they swear by it as their daily moisturizer. But that begs the question, is it worth the hype? In this video, I'm gonna go through their website, scrutinize their claims, and at the end of it, I'm gonna let you know my opinion on Le Mer as a dermatologist. My name's Osama, and I'm a dermatologist living and working in New York. I talk about skincare, medicine, and tech, so if you're interested in any of those subjects, make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on. So without further ado, let's check out the Le Mer website. Let's see the origin story of Le Mer. Um, a sea of inspiration, watch the film. Okay, so we're gonna watch this film together and I will pause as it goes along and comment on anything I see. Um, so let's get into it. Miracle broth, ooh. The story begins as it always has. As it always has. With the sea. A vast beauty that inspired one scientist to seek. Okay, one scientist. Remind me, I need to look up who this scientist is because uh, it looks like he's going to be quite key to this origin story. Already I'm seeing beautiful panning shots, amazing production quality. So uh, let's keep going. Got a powerful form of life giant sea kelp. Giant sea kelp. Okay, so you can already see this idea of natural products from the sea are going to be quite key to their, the whole Lemaire branding story. Um, a powerful form of life is apparently giant sea kelp. I've never heard them described in that way, but okay, let's, uh, let's see where they're going to go with this. Gently hand harvested, the self-regenerating marine plant can grow up to half a meter a day. I can already see the beginnings of a classic move here, which a lot of brands do, is they will take something from nature, which in its own habitat, in its own form, does something really impressive. Like for example, giant sea kelp really do regenerate in a really impressive way. They grow really quickly. But does that mean that if you were to take giant sea kelp and use it crushed up and modified in a bunch of different ways and use it on human skin, that means human skin would also be able to regenerate even though we live not in the water of the Atlantic, wherever this is, but we live on land uh, and we live with a bunch of different life circumstances. Does that mean that same renewal energy will be passed on to us? In my opinion, no, but this is a very, very classic example of what brands do. Part of the sea's vital life force. These forests are a source of concentrated energy we unleash. Ooh concentrated energy so again concentrate energy that sounds good we all want concentrated renewing energy on our skin but concentrated energy could be anything like uh, crude oil crude oil uh, petrolatum that's concentrated energy charcoal charcoal is really concentrated energy uranium very concentrated energy that doesn't necessarily mean anything uh, beneficial for your skin but keep that in mind because these associations this powerful energy concentrated form that we unleash um, really great branding, but basically bullshit in my opinion. One thing I do want to point out here though is that seaweed does actually have some really great properties and we especially use alginates which are derived from seaweed in types of wound dressing to help with really oozy weeping wounds which is far from the glamorous use case of the sea kelp here but just to let you know that you know using seaweed is not that revolutionary a concept and it doesn't necessitate something to be really really expensive just because there's seaweed in there adding essential vitamins and precious oils to this nutrient-rich plant life, fermentation begins. Oof, A plus for the production quality here, because these little golden spheres of fermentation, it looks really, really glamorous. Just to give you a bit of background, Fermentation is what happens in your fridge when you leave a grape in there for too long. It ferments. Uh, so in and of itself, it's not the most glamorous process and it doesn't necessarily portend something really beneficial going on, but it's just great the way they've used it with this graphic of these golden little spheres of renewing energy. Uh, it looks very, very convincing. Uh, but again, when you understand what fermentation is, mm, not so much. The idea of them adding enriching oils, the idea of it being nutrient rich, that's also an interesting concept because um, 
something being nutrient rich, like take seaweed being nutrient rich, that might be true, but you're not eating it actually, you're, you're putting it on your skin. So whatever nutrients um, you're trying to absorb through your skin is a very different pathway than the nutrients that we ingest in our diet. And I think that that's a line that is blurred a lot by different brands. So I think that's quite interesting. Beautiful. Nourishing ingredients transform into potent activity, unlocking new possibilities. Look at this branding guys, nourishing ingredients unlock new potential abilities. Nobody knows what that means, but it looks very, very impressive. Inside airtight cylinders, copper sounding plates and sun spectrum light energize the broth. Oof, okay, so <laughs> what I find quite funny there is copper sounding plates, okay, not quite sure what role the sound plays in it, but okay, copper sounding plates and sun spectrum light. The reason why I find that funny is because the sun emits light across the entire UV spectrum. So that's really not a very specific definition of light. Uh, the sun releases X-rays and mutating light and it also releases UVA and UVB and UVC and all different spectrums of light. So the idea that they're using sun spectrum light in an airtight container with copper sounding plates sealed off for three to four months. This sounds very scientific and it sounds very like, ooh, mysterious. Think about all that energy they're infusing in there. But you realize when you take a step back, um, none of that means anything. So because you shine light on something and because you play certain types of sound, doesn't mean that that energy is being absorbed for three to four months and then when you put it on your skin, suddenly you're getting a burst of three or four months worth of energy going on your skin. None of that makes any sense. Just imagine again that I put a piece of fruit inside a plastic container, sealed it up nice and tight and put it outside in the sun. I would also be using the buzzing energy of New York City combined with sun spectrum light for the power of your skin. Chances are though, you're not gonna use that rotten apple on your skin in three months. So charged with renewing energy, we call it miracle bra. Oh, wow, wow, okay. It's so charged, that process of the last three or four months has somehow charged as if it's kind of like a battery. Um, you've loaded up that power in three to four months and it has so much renewing energy because obviously initially it was mashed up kelp and kelp because they can renew underwater in their own environment. Naturally, if you take them out, smush them up, put them in a container and play sounds at them and light at them three to four months, naturally you're charging up the renewing energy, right? This is pseudoscience. This is not real science. This liquid that is in there is not charged with renewing energy. It just happens to be there. It's just liquid. It's not a battery that you're applying to yourself and suddenly it's charging your skin cells. So this use of words in this type of marketing is really, really misleading in my opinion. At the heart of every Le Mer treatment today, Miracle broth is as essential to creme de la mer as the sea itself. I can already tell from a brief scouring of their website that this miracle broth is just the, the key, the foundational element to all of their products is this idea that they have this miracle broth as it's titled in the name. But other than the word miracle being put in the name, I really don't see what is so miraculous about this broth at this point. Filled by hand within eight hours to help. Filled by hand, that's really, really important because if it was filled by a tube or some kind of other machine, um, that would just not be good enough for me. I need a human to take this miracle broth and fill it by hand into the container. Now, I know I'm being a bit of a prick here by making fun of that, but I do think it's important to point it out because this same kind of notion of this artisanal handcrafted boutique cream this is why they charge $500, right? Because they will say to you like, oh no, no, this isn't one of those other general creams that all those other companies release. We have a miracle broth that's infused with the energy of the sun and we fill it by hand. So obviously we're gonna charge you $500. So that's why I wanna point out things like this because this is the underlying sentiment for why Le Mer has this mystery around it. Protect its revitalizing energies. The ultra rich creme nourishes a radiant glow and helps heal dryness. Nourishes a radiant glow and helps heal dryness. Well, yes, it, it's a moisturizer. Um, I could take literal Vaseline and put it on my skin and it would also heal dryness and nourish this hydrated glow, whatever it is they said. Um, so yeah, it is fundamentally a moisturizer and this is probably the most honest part of, of the entire uh, advert so far. From the sea's eternal beauty, a lifetime of renewal. 
Okay, from the sea's eternal beauty, a lifetime of renewal. I don't know what this means. You can't just take the branding of the sea like, hey guys, you know the sea is great, right? The sea has been around for millions of years. That means our product, because it's named La Mer, which is, you know, the sea, um, we also have a lifetime of renewal. No, you can't just marry those two things together because you used one ingredient from the sea. Oof. Okay, okay. So that was a trailer video and all I can say is production quality, top notch. I need to find out whoever the team was that did theirs and uh, use it for my own YouTube channel because I think I would probably end up being more successful. But all in all, I am not impressed by the amount of mumbo jumbo and marketing speak that was in there. Uh, so yes, trailer video, not impressed at all. Let's look at the rest of the website and see whether there's anything else that's a bit more credible that'll make me change my tune. Okay guys, so we keep scrolling down in the, the story section and we find our secret of the sea. Our journey began with Dr. Max Huber, who suffered burns in a lab accident, okay, that's sad, um, and was inspired to create his own destiny. Hmm, okay, sounds like a, a superhero origin story, but I respect that. Someone had a problem, he wanted to fix it. I'm with you. Aerospace physicist by day, stargazer and dreamer by night. He hoped to unlock the legendary healing powers of the sea he held so dear. Okay, so a couple of red flags I'm seeing here right now. This idea of this Max Huber guy, I can already see that there's a lot of mythology that's associated with this character. It seems like a bit of a cult right now, to be honest. Stargazer by night and aerospace by day. And, and the other thing is aerospace physicist, that's cool. Uh, that doesn't necessarily make you qualified at all to produce a cream. In fact, aerospace physics is a very specific type of knowledge that doesn't have much overlap with understanding the way a skin barrier works. Um, the cells in there, how to fix burns, well that's a completely different type of knowledge. If you told me he was uh, a biologist of some kind, I would say, okay, fair enough, maybe he's an expert in skin, he understands how stem cells and renewal works, but just because he's an aerospace physicist, uh, a rocket scientist, a rocket scientist does not make a cream. Okay, moving on. 6,000 experiments and 12 years of searching led to the epiphany of a lifetime. A fermentation process that transformed sea kelp and other pure ingredients must be pure into miracle broth. This cell renewing elixir at the heart of creme de la mer would finally transform the look of his skin. Okay, so 6,000 experiments, very specific. 6,000 uh, is a nice round number, so it took him 6,000 experiments and 12 years, and then he had the epiphany of a lifetime. I would love to know about these experiments and to see all of the times when it didn't work out when the miracle broth caused a severe allergy and worsened the skin, that would be interesting to see. Um, but I have a feeling we're not gonna be able to find the open source manuscripts of those other 6,000 experiments. Would finally transform the look of his skin. So I think what they're trying to claim is that this cream helped fix his burns. Now that would be uh, a huge shock to me considering as a dermatologist, we know that when somebody has uh, skin burns that have cross damaged the level beneath the base of the epidermis where a lot of the stem cells live. And if it's a broad enough burn and it's got rid of the stem cells in the nearby hair follicles too, um, there's almost nothing you can do to completely return that skin to what it was like before because the stem cells at the base layer of your epidermis is what causes the renewal of your skin. And so if you were to lose those in a burn, even now in 2022, we don't have any type of cream that can reliably fix burn injuries. And it's definitely not creme de la mer that can fix it. I'll tell you that for sure. So I'm stunned at this claim. Um, I'll have to look into it on different sources and see whether they actually are claiming that there was a severe burn uh, of any type of depth and that creme de la mer after 12 years fixed it. Keep in mind, again, 12 years after he's had the burn, you would anticipate that in 12 years that skin would have scarred really severely and the idea that because he came up with this miracle broth and creme de la mer, 12 years after a significant burn, he managed to fix his skin. Uh, that is stunning, beggar's belief, and I would put my credibility on the line and say that that is impossible. Okay, so let's keep scrolling down. Each time the miracle broth is created, it is infused with drops of the batch that came before it, creating a timeless link to our original. This is the kind of stuff that drives me crazy because this is where they start to blend science with pseudoscience, with mythology. There's this mad scientist who had a burn and he went off because he's a rocket scientist and produced a miracle cream. And then once he made that miracle broth, 
we've kept the essence of that alive across decades and decades because that's the only way it could possibly work, right? Is using an essence of the previous batch. Do me a favor, this is complete nonsense. And stuff like this is what convinces me more than anything that it's a complete house of cards. It's built on nothing. If ingredients and a production process worked, it would not require this taking a bit of a batch from 70 years ago, whatever it is, uh, and keeping it alive in this chain. No, that is mythology. That is if you're telling a nice story to someone, you'd say something like that. Not if you're making a serious product that's based on science. Okay, Miracle Broth is as essential to creme de la mer as the sea itself. Okay, whatever that means. The art of fermentation. Fermentation is an art that works like alchemy. <laughs> Alchemy, the famously reliable type of science known as alchemy that we still use today. Individual ingredients can undergo a metabolic process that transforms them into micronutrients that the skin can more readily recognize and receive. Okay, true, metabolic processes can change ingredients that can change the way the skin deals with them. Fine. Look at this last sentence. Creating a whole far greater than the sum of its parts. Okay. So it, this, this whole process, this whole three months mysterious process with light and sound, it creates a process that is greater than the sum of its parts. And that is really important when you're trying to charge $500 or $1,000 for small amounts of cream where people can see the ingredients. It's really important for you to have a line like that in there where it says it creates a whole far greater than the sum of its parts because we will know the parts. We'll know what is actually in the cream and we'll say, why are you charging me so much for this? So they have to put in a line like this to explain that the art, not the science, the art of fermentation that they have perfected justifies them being able to charge this much for the cream because yeah, you don't understand, you know the parts, but we create something far, far greater, create a whole far greater than the sum of those parts. And we charge you far, far greater than the sum of those parts too. Okay, so scrolling down further, the hero, the icon, the original moisture, oh, look at this. It sounds like a, an entrance to, for like a wrestler in WrestleMania. The hero, the icon, the original moisture miracle, creme de la mer. Now that you understand this incredible origin story, the next step is to naturally shop now. So let me click on shop now, just out of interest, uh, to see, okay, this one tub of creme de la mer. Bear in mind, you're supposed to use this every day. This one tub of creme de la mer costs $360. $360 for one tub of cream that if you're using on your face and hands and neck, wherever else you need the natural renewing energy, um, that's probably gonna last you a month. $360 a month for a moisturizer. For $360 a month, that Miracle Broth better do more than just moisturize my skin. It better make me grow a foot. Um, I should become the most intelligent person in the world. I should get significantly better looking for that kind of price. Uh, because otherwise, just to keep my skin looking moisturized, that is a steep, steep price. So $360 or, or four installments of $90 each. Okay, give them credit. They're gonna let you pay it in installments. They're not animals. At first touch, Sensitivities look soothed, dryness disappears. Well, to be honest, that's the same with tap water. The second tap water touches my skin, natural dryness disappears. I would probably describe that as the miracle broth. Okay, apparently in just hours, skin feels firmer, looks smoother, and more radiant. Helps repair the look of lines and wrinkles in four weeks, and helps visibly lift the skin in just eight weeks. And apparently this is all on clinical testing. If you look at the clinical testing here in italics, clinical testing on 31 women after using product once. Now, normally when we test products, we need to use it in comparison to a placebo or like a blank vehicle of some kind. And that's what I would wanna see. If you compared creme de la mer to something else, which is just a regular cream for $2, would people, if they were blinded and not able to see which was which, would they also be able to tell a difference between creme de la mer and a product? And that is a standard that we need to reach when it comes to evidence, and especially when you're trying to charge this much money for something. Okay, so let's look at the ingredients in a bit more detail. Okay, Miracle Broth, I'm not going into this again. I've read enough about Miracle Broth for one lifetime, so let's forget that entire part. Lime tea is an antioxidant. Cool, antioxidants are good fine. It's formulated without parabens and phthalates, which to some people is really important. Me as a dermatologist, I don't care too much about parabens and phthalates. 
Um, I think power buttons are given a bad reputation for not much real reason. And so uh, I don't care, but fine. So ingredient listing, moving on from Miracle Broth, uh, algae, seaweed extract. As I mentioned, we use seaweed in other products as well. We don't charge that much. We use it for dressings, wounds. Um, so yes, that's high up on the list is algae and seaweed. The next thing on the list, mineral oil. So yes, mineral oil is a great product that is used as a moisturizer. It occludes very well, it locks in moisture. And so mineral oil is a great product and it probably does most of the heavy lifting when it comes to the actual moisturizing effect of creme de la mer. Mineral oil is probably your miracle ingredient rather than some random broth. But yes, you'll find mineral oil in probably 99% of moisturizers that you find over the counter in a CVS or Duane Reed. Okay, the rest of the stuff, uh, paraffinum, liquidum, yeah, mineral, petro, 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 petrolatum, exactly. So petrolatum, what is in Vaseline? Again, it's the gold standard of what is occlusive, what locks in moisture. So this whole fancy product with the miracle nutrients, blah, blah, they still need mineral oil and basically petrolatum, which is in Vaseline, to actually do the work of being a moisturizer. Lanolin alcohol comes from a type of wool. Some people are allergic to that, so keep that in mind. Okay, and look at this, so the two ounce tub is $360. If you were to go up to the three and a half ounce, $545, and the 16 ounce is $2,545 for a moisturizer, which primarily works based on its mineral oil and petrolatum. <sighs> and you can either get a one-time delivery or an auto replenish because you know, um, once you get hooked on creme de la mer, you're not gonna wanna stop. Okay, so just auto replenish every 30 days and make sure you're not expecting to put your kids into college. Live chat, I'm being prompted to do a live chat with the la mer people. Uh, other, let me type a message. Why are you so expensive? Agent is typing. You'll be connected with a live service consultant. Okay, fine. I don't actually want to bother giving these people a bad time because they're just doing their job, but um, it would have been funny to pursue that. Okay, so this is an interview with a wealthy person who was apparently friends with um, Dean Martin and Sinatra back in the day. And uh, she first sought out Huber in the 1980s after obtaining a sample of creme de la mer. Um, I called the man and I said, it's incredible. It's changed the texture of my skin. So the next time he came to New York, we met for lunch. He was tall and had the skin of a 12 year old. It was part of this whole origin mythical story. And he just fell in love with me. Oh great, she's, she's very humble, reliable source here. From that point on, Huber sent Von Doz um, 200 jars of creme de la mer a month. Well, no wonder she loved it. She was getting free moisturizer. Um, when all the reps give me free moisturizer of any brand, I absolutely love it too. So that makes a lot more sense now. Huber was by all accounts an eccentric magnetic personality. For a start, Hecht says his eating habits were a little strange. He would customarily consume creme de la mer straight out of the jar or dollop it onto his dinner. So the scientist, the astrophysicist who came up with creme de la mer used to eat it straight out of the jar or put it onto his dinner. He says, I swear to God, he swears to God. He would take his cream, mix it with applesauce and eat it. Okay, a designer, Ralph Rucci, also a friend of Huber's, recalls that when they first met at an elite dinner, Max became hypnotic telling his story. He had a small vial of creme de la mer at everyone's place setting, and he told us all, put some in your mouth, eat it, it's great for your digestion. I had glasses on, and Max said to me, do you have problems seeing? Take a small bit of this, dab your finger in water, and put it in your eye. Creme de la mer, the same one he claims fixes burns uh, and you can eat it. He's told people to dab it into their eye. He went around the table performing these miraculous moments and a cult formed. Yeah, that, that is very appropriate. A cult has definitely formed. Okay, it looks like the, the, the glasses and the creme de la mer and the eye story really just trailed off. I was expecting him to say that it miraculously fixed his vision as it was implied, but um, Nothing else is mentioned about that. Maybe the guest um, screamed out in anguish as the cream touched his eye because it wasn't supposed to go there. Um, and then he left the party wearing his glasses and now in a foul mood, uh, vowing to never again listen to Max Huber and his crazy stories. That was a little bit of fan fiction on my account. It actually says nothing about this whole episode. He was a dazzling, brilliant man with so much charisma, always the life of a party, center of attention. And everyone thought they'd found the fountain of youth when they found Max. So at this point, creme de la mer was well established and it had a buzz and it was already uh, sought after by everyone. 
um, after he passed away. So apparently when the executive from Estee Lauder who had brought the brand, um, when he tried to recreate the miracle broth um, as he was taught, the results were tested both in vitro and on human skin, but they didn't rival the antioxidant and anti-inflammatory potency of the original. And apparently all of the people, the clients who tried it said, no, nah, it's not good enough. So Estee Lauder's head of R&D, Joseph Gubinick, um, called upon a psychic to conjure up Huber from beyond. Let the man rest. He's already made a revolutionary treatment for the skin, the gut, and for vision. He's lived an accomplished life, he's passed away, and now you guys are bothering him. Shame on you, frankly. So apparently this encounter with a psychic went well because Gubinick came to me with notes, uh, this other person says. Um, Max says, you didn't do this and this, and was like, and I was like, how do you talk to Max? Valid question, considering Max is dead. Um, and he told me that a medium had channeled him. We went point by point through everything that the, the, the ghost of Max um, said. And apparently uh, Joe said, you didn't mention light and sound energy. How can you not mention light and sound energy? Uh, you need to go back and try it. So they went back, they added those extra elements and suddenly the miracle broth finally matched the potency of the original. Okay, now we're gonna read this article, 10 conspiracy theories about the world's most famous skin cream. So one conspiracy theory here is, did Max Huber consult astrology uh, to create Le Mer? And the answer is true, he did. Um, according to Be Bevacqua, um, Huber used to chart out the astrological alignment of each batch of miracle broth. I didn't know that was a part of it. Um, it's unknown what effect it had on the process. Um, hey, I know. Uh, it had no effect on the process. But the Estee Lauder team discovered hundreds of pages of astrology charts in Huber's former labs uh, to the disappointment of whatever uh, astrology is not involved in Le Maire's present day formulation. Well, then you're not doing it how Huber did it, frankly. And maybe I don't want your copycat Le Maire. I only want the original. Okay, guys, so my conclusion, as you're probably not surprised to hear at this point, is do not buy creme de la mer. And most of you probably weren't going to buy creme de la mer because it's so, so expensive. But my point goes beyond that. Don't even hope for a day where you can afford to buy creme de la mer. If you become wildly rich, do not spend your money on creme de la mer because it is really not worth spending that much money on a moisturizer. I don't care how good it is. Creme de la mer, by all accounts, feels good on your skin. That is not enough to justify this absolutely ridiculous price tag for this product. The entire brand of Le Mer, like so many of these luxury goods brands, is built upon the reputation that all of these famous celebrities use Le Mer. Like The Rock will say, hey, I use Le Mer every day. Yeah, that's because they send you a bunch of free Le Mer. If they sent me a bunch of free Le Mer, I would use it as well. Not because I'm a hypocrite, just because I'm sure it's a decent moisturizer, and if I'm getting a free product, I'm going to use it. The key point is, it's not because of the Le Mer that these celebrities look so young. It's because they're celebrities and they can afford to get dermatologists and plastic surgeons and people who give them Botox and filler and retinoids and other products that keep them looking young and then they happen to also use Le Mer because Le Mer sends them free products and people wrongly associate those two things together. Even if a celebrity tells you that the reason they look so young is because of creme de la mer, that's because it doesn't sound as bad as them saying, yeah, I get laser resurfacing done once a month and I've had Botox injections every three or four months and I've also had filler injections done in my lips and in my cheeks and in my temples to keep me looking young. No, 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 they prefer to just say, hey, I use creme de la mer, it's a moisturizer and also I eat healthy and that's why I look young. No. That is complete BS, and it is misrepresenting this product to the public, making people save up and use their hard-earned money on something that is a glorified moisturizer. Do not buy it. It's not an exaggeration for me to say that Le Mer represents everything I hate about the entire skincare industry. It has a tiny crumb of truth that is wrapped in layers and layers of marketing nonsense, and the part that drives me the most crazy is this weird pseudoscience mythical backstory that they use to justify these crazy prices. If you believe everything they say, the eccentric astrophysicist founder of Le Mer thought that this cream could heal burn wounds that were 12 years old to the point of perfection, that it could also treat wrinkles and inflammation, that you could eat it and it would help your digestive tract, and you could rub it on your eye and it would cure your vision. He used the alignment of the stars to perfect the miracle nutrient broth, which has now been passed on for 50 years, and Estee Lauder used some kind of magician to speak to his dead spirit 
to perfect the formula after he had passed away because he really, really wanted this multinational corporation to make hundreds of millions of dollars off of the work he had done. Now, if you believe all of those things and you're still willing to pay $500 for a La Mer cream, please leave your name and email address below in the comments because I've got some Vaseline infused with jellyfish extract that I would love to sell you. Okay, so that is my honest opinion on creme de la mer, having looked at their ingredients and what they claim on their website. So, oh, sorry, bear with me. Hello? Oh, hi. The marketing team of la mer? <laughs> how, how did you get my number? Oh, you, you see my videos? You wanna do a collab? That's, that's a lot of zeros. I, I, I guess we could talk about it, I mean. So guys, like I was just saying, the Miracle Broth is just unbelievable. There's a reason it's called Miracle Broth. It's a miracle. So make sure you get it, right? But get the biggest size, use my affiliate code, Osama Sayed. When you get the tub, put it on your face, put it in your eyes, put it up your butt. I don't care, wherever you put it, it's Miracle Broth, okay? It's gonna do weird, miraculous things and you're gonna want it, okay? Brought to you by Creme de la Mer. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching my review video. If you want to see more like this, or if there's different types of content you want me to do, I'm in that discovery phase right now of my channel and I would love to get your feedback. So drop it in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.